Hi, my name is Kevin Thomas, W1DED. Chris Misa, Yankee Lima 3, Juliet Alpha, is a good reminder that not everybody in ham radio is my age and older. At the age of 25, he's already accomplished a, a lot in the competitive world of ham radio, radio sport. If you look at 3830scores.com, you'll see a long list of single operator as well as multi-operator entries, and most of those are incredibly competitive. If you ask Chris, one of the highlights of his short ham radio career to date has been being invited to D4C in Cape Verde to operate that world-class contest station. But more recently, Chris returned from Italy, where he was part of a team for the WRTC with UR5 YKO, and they won the youth category. Very impressive. Chris is joining me today from Latvia. It's five o'clock there, and I really appreciate him taking the time. Welcome, Chris. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. So we probably should set the record straight right away that the CQ WWCW is starting in just hours, and you've taken time to be here with me. So I appreciate that. And how are you doing that? Because I'd be stressed out. <laughs> now, that, that's one of the things that uh, people usually ask me, how do I manage everything that I do? And uh, basically, I, I knew that the contest is coming, so I... I have a free day from work, uh, so I can just be focused and prepare. Um, and uh, when you came up with this idea to do this uh, interview here, um, it's good that we are doing it at five o'clock my time because now it's already dark outside and I can't do any antenna preparation things. So I did that while it was still uh, sun outside and I could do something. So uh, now it's just a little things to do and uh, we are for 95% uh, we are ready, so uh, we, will, we will get there till, till midnight UTC, no worries. Well, Chris, it's still impressive. From a rookie contester standpoint, I'd be pacing right now and not wanting to do interviews, so thank you for that. While we're talking about the CQWW coming up, tell us what your plans are. What, what, uh, where are you operating from? What are you using for gear? What are your strategies? Um, yeah, so uh, basically it will be a very simple operation that we're doing this year. Um, we will do multi-single low power uh, category from uh, Latvia. Uh, we will use a uh, good friend of mine's station, Kaspers, uh, Yankee Lima 1 Zulu Foxtrot. Uh, it's a simple setup. It's basically tribender and wires setup, but uh, we managed to get in-band station ready as well, and we will have a multiplier station as well. So basically multi-single with three different, uh, three different positions. Uh, for the gear, we will use uh, two FTDX-10, uh, so FTDX-10 transceivers, and one I ICOM-7300. Um, In-band station is with fixed tri-bender to, to Europe direction, and uh, some wires for uh, 40 and 80 meters, no 160 there. And uh, for the main station, it's basically another tri-bender that is rotatable, and some wires on uh, 40, 80, and 160 meters. So very, very simple with one bandpass filter set and one triplexer. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. I hope it, uh, it will work for uh, 48 hours. And what do you think about the propagation forecast for the weekend? Uh, it seems to be very tricky, um, especially for us up here in the north. So um, in a, when we're looking at the forecast now, then uh, it can be very, very good with uh, 10 and 15 wide open. And it can be really really bad uh if aurora hits us then uh yeah probably we are without uh 10 15 and other bands are very very noisy so chris i'm curious at your level contester at your level how much time do you spend looking at propagation you know the solar flux index uh, uh, voa cap uh, or do you do you spend a lot of time with those um not not really maybe mm, last two days before the contest maybe i check because uh to check that sooner it's still tricky and it's not very precise so uh i don't bother me to spend too much time on that so uh, i check that two two days before the contest maybe and uh then in the day when the contest starts um if I'm doing like a serious entry at single op, then uh, I usually have this Aurora oval uh, picture on one of the screens because it, like, it we have a very big effect of that. So uh, that's why I'm keeping it on just to see. But uh, if I see that everything is quiet, I even close that so it doesn't disturb me. So uh, I I know what to expect, approximately from working from here many years, but. Uh, 
And when I'm going somewhere else to, to different locations, I never, I never check the propagation because I have no idea how the propagation will go there anyway. So I doesn't even check the numbers. So Chris, let's go back to the beginning. When, when did you get your license and, and why? Um, I got my license 10, 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago. Um, I think it was 2013, but uh, uh, I'm involved in, in ham radio and in contesting already for 13 years. So I started that 2010. Uh, it started from uh, elementary st school club station. Uh, there was uh, there was a radio club with a with a call sign Yankee Lima One X Ray November, uh, where the station chief was uh, physics teacher Ka Carl while to Hotel Bravo, and uh, so first three years I operated from the radio club uh, together with uh, with the teacher, and then I got my my first license, which was a B class in Latvia. So then my call sign was uh, Wild Tree Alpha Juliet Alpha. And uh, then I think it was 2019 when I got uh, when I got A class in Estonia. I have a call sign there as well, Echo Zero Seven Golf Radio. And then I also got A class in Latvia, which is my call sign right now, Wild Tree JA. Well, I'm always curious how young people get involved with ham radio, and it's usually apparent. But I've been hearing more and more lately that there's a uh, a club at at school. So that's, uh, that's super impressive. So you must have had other friends that were part of that club. Um, not really, actually. Um, I'm always been very, very cu curious about things. So um, I just saw some very big equipment in a uh, teacher's office. And uh, a little, I was a little boy, like 12, 12 years old, I guess I was. And uh, I just went to the teacher and asked, what is that? Why do you have that stuff in school? Like, what are you doing? He just invited me in the office, told me in five words what is uh, amateur radio, and uh, I started to visit the club every single day after uh, after the school, and uh, I just got very very interested in all of this. And then uh, I remember I uh, when I started, I made my first QSOs in in PACC contest. I think it was so it's beginning of the year, and uh, then after a few months, I broke my leg pretty badly and I couldn't go to school so I couldn't go to radio club and I was just spending most of my days googling what is contesting how to work a pileup listening to I remember I listened to D4C pileups all the time on YouTube and uh, tried to pick out the calls in Microsoft Word just typing in the call signs and uh, then uh, yes and then just after I got started to recover from uh, from my broken leg I just uh, visited that teacher all the time at his home where he had some bigger antennas and uh, started to do ev every single contest every single weekend from him just non-stop all the time maybe even just five QSOs but uh, I was there every single weekend. So your contesting career got started early almost from the beginning it sounds like. Yes yes my first QSO was uh, in the contest and uh, first I don't know first year, I think I didn't have any QSO outside uh, the contest. So I was all the time into contesting and nothing else. Now, obviously the contest this weekend is CW, but I presume, and I think I remember this from 3830 scores, you're also doing a lot of phone. I don't know if you get into Riddy at all. Uh, wh what are the different contests that you favor? I learned CW a lot later than I worked already competitively in, uh, in phone. Um, I still prefer phone if I need to go for a high score because um, I just feel that I'm better there. But uh, on C I, I enjoy CW because uh, if you're doing single op, especially I enjoy um, CW because your hands are free um, and your mouth is free. So you can drink, you can eat during the contest. It's very easy, but in the phone contest, uh, it's, it's very hard. So um, I enjoy SSB or phone pileups more than I enjoy CW, but if it's overall, then CW probably is better for me. And uh, I'm, I'm not really into those digital modes, RTTY, FT8, FT4, or whatever else we have right now. Um, I, I've done a few RTTY contests and uh, maybe a few FT8 QSOs to test out how that stuff works, but um, it's basically phone or CW for me. I'm a young guy, but I'm into old stuff. <laughs> Chris, I know that going to D4C was a highlight, and I hadn't known that you were sitting at home with a broken leg listening to the pileups on YouTube or wherever you were listening to it. Tell me about that experience. How did how old were you and how did you get invited? How did you earn that slot to go to that competitive station? Um, yeah, D4C for me was uh, was a dream 
till the beginning when I first uh, heard them on air and then started to Google what what is that station and where it's located. And um, then I contacted a few guys from there when I was still in high school. I was 16, 17 years old the first time when I contacted them uh, because uh, also a Latvian guy, Dirt, uh, well, two kilo Lima, uh, he was uh, part of the owner, I think, uh, of the station for some time. And uh, I spoke with him as well, since there's been a lot of Latvians there. He said, it's not a problem. Well, whenever you want, you can go. And then, um, but it was all the time it stopped because of the financial side. Uh, it's pretty expensive to go there since it's already Africa. Um, so uh, while I was in still, still in high school, I didn't work. Uh, I didn't have any money. I couldn't ask my parents that amount of money. Uh, so I had to cancel it year by year. And then finally, they came up with this idea to bring some uh, youngsters there. Um, and for uh, for youngsters, there was a lot of benefits. So we didn't have to pay like all the price that usually everyone is paying. We had to pay just some part of it. So it was already a lot of a lot cheaper. And uh, that was that was the way to go there. If I can get it uh, at least a little bit cheaper, then uh, that was the right time. And uh, I was there together with another with another youngster that was uh, Luba from uh, Ser Serbia. I think his call sign was uh, Yankee United 5 Echo Echo Alpha. We were two, uh, two youngsters there and uh, we did multi multi. But uh, the, the first crazy thing that I remember from, uh, from D4C is that the first day when we landed there, I think it was Monday, we went up to the station. Uh, we turned on the flex radio. First time flex radio was used there uh, when I was there. And uh, the 15 meter band was the only one that was ready to transmit and we didn't have any amplifiers there. It was just a flex. Um, and uh, Marco IK2LFF uh, asked Richard to W7 Zulu Radio to operate in 15 meters, but we can see on SDR that there's no signals that the band is closed. So um, Richard gave a few CQs on phone and the band was just wide open to Europe and everyone said we are the only signal that is uh, that is uh, on the band and we did that with 100 watts and one four element mono bander so that was crazy and uh but speaking about the age i was so that was four years ago i think i was 21 when i was there yes 21. and tell me was was that experience intimidating for you or did you feel confident enough in your contesting abilities that uh you knew you could do your part no i was pretty confident and i knew i could do my part um i was Actually, before the contest, when we did some operation with D4Z uh, call sign, the pileups were heavier because there was no other big stations on the air. Uh, we were the only ones, then uh, the pileups were heavier, but it was fun and uh, I could manage to operate it. And then in the contest, um, it was WPX. So the main challenge in WPX always is those serial numbers. And when the contest is going longer and longer, the numbers are getting longer and longer as well. So that was the main challenge. I think WW would be a lot better from there. So uh, that's one thing that I'm also looking forward to go there for uh, WW at some time. So I could just do a quick 5935 and that's it. And that five, nine and four numbers because we made more than thousand QSOs on each band. So Chris, I know you've operated from some big stations. What are the other big contest stations that you've spent some time at? Oh, I ha definitely have to point out TS5 TV. I mean, uh, that is probably, if not in Europe, if not in world, then probably one of the biggest stations in Europe. And um, I have to give a lot of credit to, to Tinno, to TS5 TV, because uh, he is one of the guys why I'm still into this hobby. Um, it's the first time I got there, I wasn't even 15. I was 14 and something, I think. And I didn't even had my own call sign then. Uh, they invited me for also WPX SSB. Uh, that was the first time when they did multi multi. And uh, that was the first time when I saw outside the box. So let's say that the box was the little radio club in school. And then uh, I just went to, to, to his station and uh, I couldn't imagine anything like that. And since then I've been in very close contact with him and uh, Every single year I'm going there, um, either for single operation or multi-operation. But uh, whenever there's a contest coming, Tino contacts me and asks if uh, I'm willing to go. And I'm always saying yes. We even um, laugh about that. I haven't 
I have an agreement with Tenno now that uh, every single WWSSB contest for the rest of the 10 years, I have to be there. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, that's probably to point out the biggest station, but uh, I've also been to, I've been to Raleigh to Lima Yankee 4 Alpha for a few hours. I haven't done any contests from there, but uh, I visited Raleigh at the beginning of this year. I think it was February or something, uh, together with a good friend of mine, Amir, 4X6 Tango Tango. Uh, so we went there just for a few hours and uh, operated a little bit, but uh, I never did any contests from there. Um, and then definitely uh, uh, Latvian stations, um, Yankee Lima 2 Sugar Mike, he have very, very big antenna park there. Well, to Golf Delta as well, and uh, Arvis, uh, Yankee Lima 2 Lima Yankee. So uh, a lot of guys. And now also another friend of uh, mine from Estonia, uh, build a very good station, very competitive station, um, Echo Sierra 7 Golf Mike, Christian. Uh, he's usually using Echo Sugar 7 Alpha call sign. So uh, I've been operating from there some contests as well now. And Chris, do you prefer single op over a multi-op? I, I know looking at 3830, you have maybe three to four multi-ops during the year, but you still have a lot of single op entries. And I know when a lot of hams get to be about my age, they start leaning toward the multi-ops more often just because it's a little bit easier on the body but uh, do you have a preference um not not really because uh whenever i when i whenever i have a chance to do single op i will do single op because then i can uh just see how i perform in single op and uh, i can uh, uh increase my skill but uh multi-op is definitely nice because you can have rest from time to time and uh one of the main things i want to uh, why I like multi-op is because uh, you can learn from different kind of guys and how they operate. And uh, for me as a as a young guy, that's very good. And uh, I like that I've operated from many uh, multi-op stations and uh, many different guys so I can see how, how the guy is operating and I can learn something from each of them. So I don't really have a preference, but uh, since I don't really have my own station at the moment, Whenever I have a chance to do single op, I'll be happy to do it. And Chris, do you think there's a chance you'll be coming to the U.S. anytime soon to operate one of the uh, the big contest stations here, like K1LZ or K3LR, uh, K9CT? There's a whole lost, long list of them. What do you think? Yeah, I would love that. Um, I would love that. Uh, one guy that I'm uh, in contact with uh, is uh, Richard at W7 Zula Romeo. That, um, he has a station, of course, but uh, it's not like those that you mentioned, the, the big contest stations. But um, I met Craig two times uh, in Italy, so in uh, last year and this year, uh, K9CT, and we spoke about that, and I would absolutely love to go there, as well as K1 Lima Zulu or K3 Lima Radio or K1 TTT, um, W3 LPL. So uh, definitely would love to see how, because for us, it's uh, in Europe, whenever we see one of those call signs in Benmap, uh, that's the first one we listen to stateside to understand if the states are actually starting to come. If we can hear them, okay, then the propagation will start soon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I would love to be on the other side when uh, when I can be the state guy. So that would be nice, yes. Chris, tell me about the WRTC. I've been fascinated with that uh, radio sport championship for a while. I've talked to Randy, K5ZD, uh, Tim, K3LR. Um, just recently spoke to Mark Haynes and Andy Cook that are putting together the WRTC 2026. But I understand uh, that you participated and won the youth category in WRTC, well, I guess it's called 2022, even though it took place in 23. And before you answer, I wanted to give a shout out to Andrea, IK4VET, who recommended that we speak. And from what I understand, you spent some time at his station doing a little bit of a training run. So tell me about that the entire WRTC experience, how you get on the list, on the roster, uh, the experience with Andrea. That was actually uh, very interesting. So uh, my plan wasn't uh, to go to WRTC as um, as a youngster, as a youth team, because I didn't have a teammate. And uh, it's very hard to get a decent teammate um, in the youth category. So uh, the initial plan was to go there together with all the, let's say, adults uh, or with the OMs. And, uh, but I didn't qualify. Um, I was, I think, one or two spots away from qualifying. And um, so I just, the last option was to go as a youngster there. Um, and then I think it was 2021 
when uh, we did multi two operation from ES5 TV again, and Ukrainian team came as well uh, with three Ukrainians. So it was Slava, US2 United Yankee Whiskey, uh, Roman United Romeo Zero Mike Charlie, and Yaroslav United Whiskey Seven Lima Lima. And uh, I saw on Slava's Facebook, I guess, some pictures that he have a youngster there. Um, and uh, I just asked Slava about about him, said yes, his name is Artyom, he's uh, doing pretty fine, he's interested in CW, he's been learning a lot. And then I just asked, uh, would Artyom be interested in uh, coming to WRTC together with me? And Slava didn't even ask to Artyom anything, he just said definitely, yes. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just contacted Artyom, asked him what what uh, what is he thinking of, about this idea? So uh, he was interested, he said yes, let's do it. Um, and then uh, then the situation got a little bit uh, bad because of uh, the Russia invasion in Ukraine, uh, because my teammate is from Ukraine, we are close to Russia and Ukraine, and uh, well, basically we didn't want to go to WRTC because they still supported that uh, Russia and Belarusian teams can participate, but uh, nevertheless in other sports uh, they were banned. So uh, we didn't really know if we, were, if we will go there, and um, also we didn't have any setup ready. And then in 2022, Andrea, shout out to Andrea, um, contacted us and uh, said, well, guys, you can come here and uh, just do a little training session from my station. Uh, we didn't bring any equipment. Uh, we used Andrea's equipment. So we had FD 1000 MP and uh, DS590 uh, with a simple tribander wire setup like it's in WRTC. Um, just to understand, basically it was to understand the propagation in Italy and uh, to understand how we can cooperate with our team because that was the first time we actually met each other. Um, the contest didn't go very, very good. The score wasn't the best, but uh, at least we knew what to expect last uh, next year. And um, then I was still doubting, doubting myself to go to WRTC or not. And uh, I started to receive a lot of phone calls uh, from Tunno, of course, uh, ES5 TV. He said, you definitely need to go. Uh, Kaspers, well, one Zulu Fox said also, you definitely need to go. Slava said, you need to go. So I was like, okay, if everybody's saying that we need to go, we're going. And then it was uh, the question about the equipment because I, uh, from the beginning, I knew that we need to use a radio that have SDR option in there so we can see the signals since uh, we can't use any cluster or skimmers there. So easier to do search and pounds. And uh, I got the FTDX10. It was actually sponsored uh, from uh, my workplace where I work from uh, from the company Desktime. They sponsored uh, that to me. Um, the second uh, radio I got from a friend of mine in Latvia, well, to Golf Victor Charlie. Uh, he gave me exactly the same radio, FTDX10. Um, then it was the question again about the filters because I didn't have any band test filters. Uh, the first set that I tested was uh, wasn't uh, performing that well. We tested it on uh, May, yes, on May on King of Spain contest CW together with Caspers, and uh, we understood that those filters are not good enough. And there was just one week and uh, WPXCW starts. So that's the, like the last contest to test something. So uh, I took the vacation days. Um, I went to ES5 TV. He, he gave me filters. He gave me triplexer. Uh, we tested that, that everything worked fine. Um, then again, uh, it, there was a question about this um, recording of QSOs. So uh, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a problem on SSB, but on CW, um, in the recording, I couldn't hear my own signal. And that was one of the points that WRTC needs, that you need to record also your signal. Um, then uh, on, on, on one FTDX10, the CW transmitting wasn't working. I don't know why, still don't know why. Um, and then Willness, while well, to Kilo Florida, basically saved the whole event. Uh, without him, I probably wouldn't go there because uh, uh, just week or two weeks before uh, leaving to Italy, he came to, to, my, uh, to my place and uh, we fixed all of those things that uh, CW was working, recording was working properly, but I didn't have any idea how to fix it. Only he had an idea how to fix it. So uh, he fixed it, everything worked. And uh, then I started to pack, pack everything. But uh, um, definitely that little training session at Andrea's place helped a lot. We knew what to expect. And uh, 
Uh, we also, in WRTC in itself in Italy, we got very lucky, I would say, with our referee, uh, Olaf G0, Charlie Kilo Victor, amazing guy, and uh, he's very experienced. And uh, before the contest, we spent some time and uh, he checked all, all of our equipment. And uh, yeah, that was, that was fun. And then in the contest also, we didn't have any big troubles. Uh, before the contest, there was a little bit of noise, but uh, during the contest, it disappeared. We didn't have any local noise that would disturb us. And uh, we had a great shack with two air conditioners there. So uh, we were nice and cool, even cold at some time. Um, so yeah, I think that played out pretty well. Uh, and the strategy, I mean, I, I've i never been a big tactical strate strategic guy. Um, I always say that the stra strategy in this sport works for first couple of hours and then everything can change. You never know. So uh, we had strategy for first couple of hours and then it was impro improvising this. Just go there, do that, I'll do that. <laughs> and and uh, it played out nice. Um, it, uh, it was fun to see uh, the scores after the contest, um, how we performed during the contest, like the places where we were. And, uh, uh, we were the only youth team that ever was in top 10 during the contest. Uh, I think fifth or sixth place was our highest during the contest. And uh, that was nice. I was I was very happy about that. Maybe a little bit more SSB QSOs would uh, give us even better result. But uh, I didn't even analyze the logs. I just was extremely happy that we got that trophy because I didn't expect us to get it. And one of the things, Chris, I love about the hobby is the camaraderie. Uh, the support that people get. And you've, you've just described that. Your, your trip to the WRTC involved a lot of people being supportive and giving you a helping hand. I had a great conversation with Yuri, of Victor Echo 3, Delta Zulu, who won the WRTC. And he was talking about the same thing. The uh, camaraderie at that level in Italy was just, uh, I, I think, worth the price of admission. Um, what What was that experience like for you as a young contester to be in the room with veterans like Yuri and Randy and Craig and, you know, multitude of others. What was that like? Yeah, that was, uh, that was amazing because, uh, I knew almost everybody there, but I didn't met, I haven't met them ever, but I know already who they are. So <laughs> that is, that is fun. And, uh, when you can speak with them and you can speak with them, not only about radio or contesting, but, uh, whatever you prefer after all the meetings and everything, just, uh, um, so yeah, that was, that was fun. And, uh, I made a lot of friends there as well. And, um, right now, even it's, uh, it's nice that I, I got, uh, an invitation to go to Limazulu at some time, uh, to go to Italy again at some time, to go to D4 again, uh, to go to, to three Bravo eight maybe at some time. So, uh, to, to go to States, uh, from, uh, from Craig. So, uh, that, that is fun. And I, I like those events for uh those kind of people get together um that can be even without a contesting but just to get together with these guys and uh to share some moments that you had in the past and uh then or to plan some future contests together with them so uh that is nice and uh it was it was something yeah it was something and i met also uh, uh kilo lima 9 alpha uh the previous wrtc winner as well um uh, so yes very very nice experience so Chris, I presume you're working on qualifying for 2026? Um, yes, we really don't know what is the plan actually. Uh, the qualifying is started already, but uh, since I'm doing like multi-single low power, that will not give me a lot of points in, uh, in the qualification. But, uh, uh, and I'm not a youngster anymore. Uh, that was the last time I could be a youngster. So um, we're planning to go to WRTC if everything goes well, then uh, together with uh, with Christian, ES7 Golf Mike. But uh, they changed uh, our qualifi qualification areas rules, and uh, we're not very happy about that. And we uh, write a lot of emails uh, to, to 2026 WRTC um, organizing committee, but uh, they didn't change it back. So now it's very, well, it's hard, but... Uh, it's doable. So uh, they changed their qualification area in sub-regions. And uh, we we had only two spots and now we have sub-regions. So uh, we still have two spots, but uh, in real world, it's uh, one spot per sub-region. So uh, now we have only one spot in three countries. So it's La Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. We have only one, one spot. 
and uh, we have very good stations and operators here so it's going to be a very competitive b- battle to to get to england well chris i wish you the best of luck in qualifying but you also seem like a very determined young man so i think if there's a way you'll find it uh, good luck this weekend i don't want to keep you any longer than necessary so you can get back to focusing on prep for the cq wwcw i really appreciate your time today look forward to uh, getting you in the log down the road yeah thank you kevin uh hope to catch you and uh, yes if you need anything just let me know i'll find time i've been talking to chris misa yankee lima three juliet alpha if you're uh, a contester i'm sure you've got him in your log if not look for him thank you again <laughs>